Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from beautiful Waikiki Beach. I was just down at the beach having a cup of Kai coffee. It's the great Hawaiian coffee here right in front of our house with my wife. And uh, normally we pray the liturgy of the hours. We got distracted this morning, though, by the big surf. It's 20 foot plus faces, so the whole surfing tribe is out there charging big waves. Well, I am here stuck doing a radio show with our guest, Carlo Broussard. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, the thing about that's so cool about my life is that I have a radio show and guess what happens when you have a radio show? You get to talk to people who would never want to talk to you normally. <laughs> and I have a guest here who actually, we don't have a lot of returning guests, but Carlo Broussard is with us. I think this is our third or fourth time to have you back, Carlo. And, and, and we just love having you here. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, Bear. Thanks for having me, brother. It's always an adventure, bro, to be with you. <laughs> I, know, just, I just had coffee with Jason Jones down there at the beach, too. You know, I love my brother, Jason Jones. And I think his next book is like, you know, some like lessons from a guy that you won't see in heaven, that you probably won't see in heaven. In other words, he's thinking he's going to be making a pass through purgatory. But you've written a new book on purgatory. And, uh, and actually, don't Catholics see purgatory as a part of heaven? Or give us, give us just that basic big macro yeah. definition of, of what purgatory is right well to answer the question sh in short it's not a part of heaven because heaven is the beatific vision where you're seeing the divine essence that perfect and complete definitive state of supreme happiness purgatory as defined by the church in a sort of a great a great synopsis of the understanding of the catholic doctrine of purgatory is found in paragraphs 1030 to 1032 in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And if we were to take those three or four, uh, those three paragraphs and uh, construct a succinct definition of purgatory, it would be the final purification of the elect who, of those, of the souls of those who die in friendship with Jesus, who have not attained the perfect holiness necessary for heaven for the beatific vision. So bottom line, if you die in friendship with Jesus, you got sanctifying grace in your soul, but you haven't attained the perfection of holiness necessary for heaven, you still got a little defilement or some remnants of sin, before entering into heaven, the soul of that saved person got to get cleaned up. That defilement, those remnants of sin got to get taken care of before the soul enters into the beatific you, you, see, so that's what we understand by purgatory yeah you know, carl to me to me that purgatory is 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 dignity it's god showing man dignity it, in in other words you have a freedom of will yeah, yeah. there was a there's a rebellion in heaven once in the past and it's not going to happen again and there was a rebellion on earth too and uh it gives it, what it's saying to you is like okay there, there is this there is this concept i think in uh, in a lot of um uh, non-Catholic circles that you die and then boom, you're perfect. That that's not the way it works on earth. It's not the way, a nature of our soul. And so when we die, I love the way you say that, you say that in friendship with Jesus. And our, our, final, our final, final destiny is the beatific vision. But God gives us that opportunity in purgatory for, for pur purgation, uh, for us to choose him, to choose him, to choose him. And my understanding uh, from some of my reading is that we, we, may, we may have a glimpse of God, we may see him, um, but it's a, there's, a, there's just this burning away of our own, our own selfish desires, our, our, uh, you know, and there's a purgation of, of, of the consequences of sin and things like that, so that, so that it, it really is giving the person dignity, but people have this, this set that is like part of hell and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're you're in flames, and so help right. us help us clarify yeah. the myth from the the truth of sure. it. Sure. So you got two ends of the spectrum in the in the theological tradition. Some have emphasized the suffering and the quote unquote pain of purgatory, such that it's sort of closer to the hell side of the spectrum. 
And then you also have in the theological tradition, the emphasis on the joys and the happiness of purgatory, which puts it on sort of the heaven side of the spectrum. And both and are true. So the church does affirm that in purgatory, there is suffering that is endured. That's part and parcel of getting rid of the remnants of sin, right? Whether it's an immediate remission of the guilt of venial sin that's still in the soul, if you got guilt of mortal sin, you're going to hell, right? So any soul in purgatory, they're they're automatically saved. They're they're guaranteed their salvation. Or any other any other remnants of sin, like unhealthy attachments to created goods, or yes. dead of temporal punishment for past sin, all of that stuff's got to get taken care of, and there will be suffering involved. What's the nature of that suffering? The degrees of intensity of that suffering? That's subject to speculation. The church has never given us any sort of definitive teaching on that, but that there is suffering we can affirm. But as I point out in my book, Bear, Purgatory is for Real, good news about the afterlife for those who aren't perfect yet, there are joys within purgatory that go beyond the joys of this world such that there can be a legitimate happiness, not the perfect happiness of the beatific vision, but a legitimate happiness and a happiness that goes far beyond what we can possibly achieve in this life in purgatory. So you have sort of the negative aspect of the reality of purgatory, the suffering that's involved, but you also have a positive aspect, all the joys and uh, the happiness that's there as well to contextualize, so to speak, the negative aspects. So it's sort of a, it's a matter of both and. Right. Now, if I may, you mentioned about the dignity aspect of it. Mm. Now, one could say, well, we don't really need purgatory for God to manifest our dignity because we have heaven or hell, which our choices will determine whether we go one way or the other. But there is some truth. There is some there's truth to what you said there, Bear. That was a good insight because purgatory is taking care of the consequences of sin, the remnants of sin, which follow from our abuse of free will so that whenever we we choose sin, it's going to mess things up, mm. right, within mm. us and within the divine order of things. And so uh, that that our choices have consequences implies a certain dignity that we have with our free will. So you're spot on there, Bear, with regard to, you know, purgatory being an instance along with heaven and hell of manifesting our dignity as mm -hmm. free creatures. Yeah, C.S. I was just been reading, just read the Great Divorce again last weekend, and C.S. Lewis has that quote there, basically that ultimately there's two types of people. I don't know if I'm paraphrasing it right. Those to whom God says, "Thy will be done," because they wanted their will, and they turn that inward downward spiral into Dante's Inferno. You know, but right. but those who who say to God, "Thy will be done," welcome into the kingdom. But there is that. There is that. I, I'm an athlete. You know, no pain, no gain. It's a real right. true thing that to, to become a great athlete, uh, and I, I am a world champion tandem surfer, so I'm kind of good in some ways. To become a great athlete, you have to suffer. You know, whether it's st stretching muscles or, or sure. strength or whatever. I, and I just had I just had a surgery reattaching a hip muscle. I hulied my canoe, my outrigger, and tore one of my muscles loose, right, in my hip. I just had that reattached. The Bible says the wounds of a friend heal. Jesus is that surgeon, that very precise scalpel. But believe me, there is pain <laughs> right yeah, now uh, in my rehab. And so it isn't, to me, to me, it would be like, where did I go? If I died and I, and I was still living in a place of selfishness and wanted my own agenda and, you know, all those tugs and pulls of a, of a soul that isn't totally pure, I would wonder what happened. I died and, oh, I'm perfect. It would seem like. It would just seem almost like, I'm not going to say a violation, but it would seem like it t took away my dignity. I have to be the one that says, yes, I'm going to let go of this. I'm going to, you know, God help me pry my fingers loose, but I'm going to let go of this. And yeah. so to me, the, I, I embrace purgatory. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I'm going there. And I would really look forward to the time of cooperating with God's grace to burn away the dross. Yeah, and you know, the choice, you, meant, you mentioned the choice to say yes. It's important to note that the choice to say yes is present at the moment of death for those who are friends of our Lord, who have sanctifying grace. And that choice is secure after death for the souls in purgatory. Mm. So they've made their definitive choice 
for God as their ultimate life's goal. And the and knowing at that moment in standing in the particular judgment to be judged, the soul comes to have a keen awareness, right, of one's life, one's dispositions of the soul, and voluntarily receives the mercy of God. That is the purification of the soul. Obviously, nobody wants suffering and pain in and of itself, but the soul recognizes that the purification is needed if there are still defilements on the soul remaining after death, and voluntarily receives that mercy of God. And bear, it is a mercy because guess what? Mm -hmm. God did not have to set it up such that those who die in friendship with him would be purified after death because that's not something he owes us. He could have willed an order of providence where we die and as we die with some defilement that's not serious enough for hell, but yet it still can't get us into heaven because we, we're defiled. And God does not have to purify that defilement in order to prepare us to enter into the beatific vision. It is pure grace. It is a pure, pure grace. gift. We're talking with Carlo so Broussard. We got to take yes. a break, Carlo. Oh, go ahead. We're go ahead. talking with Carlo Broussard. Uh, he gusts. Uh, he talks at 120 miles an hour and gusts to 180 like I do. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Carlo Broussard, Catholic.com. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up Apart. Two times work took me across the country ahead of my family. Another time was separated from them for better part of a year in order to make ends meet. Apart is hard. There is one particular fellow that works serious hard at keeping things apart or causing things to come apart. That would be the devil himself. Oh yes, he's real. The word diablos means the one who separates. He's been in the separating business since ancient time. We have to admit he's been fairly successful at living up to his name. Amazing what destruction he's accomplished with only one primary tool, lying. Confronting some religious liars, Jesus charged, You belong to your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Could be that's why folks lie so much. Learned it from their daddy, the devil. So question is, how does one stop old slew foot in his tracks? Same way Jesus did. Repeatedly struck him down with the truth. It's why the Bible's called the sword of the spirit. Jesus said Diablos was not holding to the truth. So stands to reason that one who holds to the truth will not be deceived. There's a Bible verse, a counter blow, if you will, for each deception and temptation. Now, holding on to the truth can take a good deal of effort, like resisting the temptation of a beautiful woman, or cheating on your tax return, or resisting a powerful want to pass on a word of gossip. So know how to use your sword, strap it on, and draw it for battle blood without hesitation when called upon. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, we're, we're really, we've dedicated so much effort and work into pre preparing um, at deepadventure.com the Bear School of Manliness. And it's kind of interesting how it's morphed and developed. Uh, the 36 different rules. It's a three-year curriculum for men. But what's happening is fathers are going through this curriculum with their sons. And so when they, it's it's an online uh, with, with written with written context. There's, there's homilies from a friend of mine, Father uh, Bryce Lundgren, who's a 
cowboy priest in Wyoming and and little rants from Jason Jones and and two minute deep virtues by me and so there's just this great mixture multimedia mixture for men to go through but also for men to lead their sons through so go to deepadventure.com and you'll find out more about that you know we have our guest today Carlo Broussard at Carl what is your website again Carlo carlobroussard.com oh hard to hard to know or you can find him at catholic.com you there know you paul wrote wrote about finishing the race so that he could have that crown you know and i've been right. to olympia i've been where the olympic games were held mm -hmm. um and, and and he very much looks at it like an athlete does uh, right. this this, this the, to finish to finish the fight to finish the race and 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 so often uh, you know you know i was i was uh, at a tandem surf contest in Cocoa beach florida Big, big contest, biggest contest on the East Coast for surfing, but we had a tandem event. And our Catholic priest came down because they, the men's group sponsored our event. And I had the priest give absolution to everybody who had ever dropped in on anybody on a wave in the, in the past year. But I overheard the, Christians, uh, the Christian uh, Surfer Alliance getting ready to go out and, and share the gospel, and we were doing the same thing on the beach. But they said, now, ask someone if they've ever given their life to Jesus. And, I, and if they have, then you can skip them and go to the next person. Hmm. So there is this, talk to us about that once saved, always saved, vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the Catholic and the historical view, I must say, going back to the yeah. early church, uh, of, of that, that situation. Talk, talk yeah. to us about that. Well, it, what's interesting, it's interesting that you bring this up, Bear, because what those Christians, the Christians who hold to the doctrine of once saved, always saved, they apply to Christians on this side of the veil what we profess to be true for the souls in purgatory. Interesting. Because the souls in purgatory die in a saving, the souls of Christians who die in a saving relationship with Jesus, they are eternally secure. Heaven is theirs. It just might not be theirs immediately if there are some remnants of sin that have to get taken care of. But their eternity is secure. Whereas for us, according to the Bible and what the Bible teaches us, and you mentioned Paul, right? And you even mentioned the passage where Paul talks about this and running the race. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, that's where he talks about it, Bear. And in verse 27, Paul says, I pummel, by, pummel my body lest I become disqualified or a castaway. The Greek word there, adokimos, which means to be separated from Christ. So Paul, who has been initially saved, he's in Christ, he's in relationship with Christ, he has grace in his soul, even Paul recognizes that it's possible for him to be disqualified from receiving the crown of eternal life, to be separated from Christ, which allows us to conclude that it's possible for somebody who initially receives the grace of salvation and enters into relationship with Christ to fall out of that relationship. And of course, if somebody dies separated from Christ, they're gonna spend the rest of their existence separated from Christ. You know, I was reading a book uh, just the other day. I'm, my next book, by the way, is called Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, 12, <laughs> rules of, 12 Rules of Manliness, based on Carlo Broussard's life, of course. But, um, <laughs> but so I'm reading these cowboy books. I really read a really cool book by a cowboy uh, pastor from uh, Oklahoma, I think it is. But he's making the statement, well, once you've been saved, then you're guaranteed going to heaven. But those who fall away, then they, they kind of back into it and say, well, they weren't really ever saved. Yeah. Let's just get over that and get to the truth of it, that there's, there, is a, there is a cooperating with God's grace. And you keep, and you keep, and you keep bringing this key phrase, phrase up, if you die in sanctifying grace. What does that mean? Yeah, sanctifying grace is basically just God's life dwelling in the soul, mm. right? Which puts us into, it. it's that which makes us righteous inwardly within our soul, makes us pleasing in the sight of God. It's that which makes us have the, be in a right relationship with God, where our mind and our heart is rightly ordered to God as our supernatural end. So we call it grace. It's God's power, sort of a quality that's dwelling within the soul to make us holy, to make us righteous, and that actually puts us into a right relationship with God and elevates us mm. to be able to operate on a supernatural level, such as faith, hope, and charity. These are supernatural powers that we do not have by our natural, with our, by, by our human nature alone. You know, I just know when I, when I first experienced uh, 
the Holy Spirit in a personal way. You know, during the Catholic charismatic renewal back in the cowboy days of the uh, 70s of the renewal. And uh, and I had just this just tremendous experience of God's love filling me. But as yeah. that was happening, it was like, I mean, it was unbelievably powerful experience of God's love. I could, it was as if the Holy, I could just almost see it in my mind, the Lord, Jesus going in and saying, oh, I'm going to bring all my light and love into your home. And, and I could feel this grace and love filling me. And then he said, I wonder what's behind this cupboard. And I go, oh, you don't have to go in there. And he, almost like he looked at me, okay, you can go in there, purge it, clean it, um, you know, uh, forgive it, fill it, you know. And so there are still those cupboards in my life that I know that God, that God is God is having you know to deal with, and I know there's that that image of in the scripture of purifying the dross, you know. And I've heard it said that the person who is purifying gold, <laughs> you know, it's it's in a furnace, yeah. but he keeps skimming off the impurities until what? Until that refiner can see their reflection perfectly in that in the gold. So to me, purgatory. So for people who will say, I gotta believe in once saved, always saved, because I know I'm not holy enough to get to heaven, you know. So they they cling to that. Once saved, always saved, because they don't do it. I blew up. I blow it. You know, right? Again and again and again. That's where they're. That this should give people great comfort without having to cling That's to right. a false doctrine. That if your heart is for Jesus, and you you have that daily examine and you're seeking the Lord, in, uh, and I'll let you develop this thought more. But but there there's this wonderful place called purgatory. To me, it's going to be. A, I'm an athlete. I'm ready, man. Put me in. Put me into. Put me into boot camp. You know, I'm ready to yeah. have that final purification. No, that's actually a good insight, Bear, because what the false doctrine of once saved, always saved is the, the problem that the false doctrine of once saved, always saved is trying to solve in people's lives is what the true doctrine of purgatory solves. The right. concern that, man, I love Jesus, but I'm not perfect enough to enter into speak heaven. If for I yourself, to Carla. Speak for yourself, Carl. Speak for yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not, I love Jesus, but I'm not perfect enough that if I were to die right now, I could immediately enter into heaven. Some def that defilement, whatever small, whatever degree of defilement, as little as it is, will impede me from immediately entering into heaven. And I realize that, right? Well, the doctrine of purgatory quells that concern. It meets that concern. It helps you overcome that obstacle, right? Whereas the doctrine of once saved, always saved, although ordered to the same conclusion, right, trying to meet the same need, because it's contrary to the Bible, it's not true, and thus we ought not to hold to it. Well, let's talk about that one more one more time, because it's it's such a, a, a pitfall, I think, for people. Because I, I see so many people say, well, when I was saved, well, I think as Catholics, we see, I, I like the statement that, you know, we, we were saved, we're being saved, we will be saved. You know, there's that, that, that transformation of the soul that's taking place. But when did this, I mean, people can quote scripture, pull things out of context and say, see what it says. But when you, behind me, you see all my, you know, you love these books behind me, don't you? All yeah, the writings of the early man. church fathers, right? Yeah. When yeah. did this, this, this uh, when did we begin to see this sort of thinking uh, take place in Christendom? Yeah, it, w it wasn't until uh, there shortly after or at the time of the Protestant Reformation where you had this idea that through faith, by grace, through faith, I am able to be put into or declared to be in a right relationship with God. That's the label for that is justification, right? And that extrinsic declaration by God that I'm in right relation relationship with him through faith is secure. Now, the rest of my life is going to be what is called sanctification, a process of sanctification, of being made holy. But the relationship, the, the order that I have to God is eternally secure because of God being the one to declare me to be just. Now, Bear, this is important because even on this view, brother, there would still be a place for purgatory. So let's just say for argument's sake that this doctrine is correct, that once I'm saved, I'm always saved. But as you pointed out a while ago, there's still going to be a need to become perfectly holy, right? There's gonna still be a process of going through sanctification and being made holy, even though I'm eternally secure. Even if you're eternally secure and you die, you still might have some defilement that needs to get taken care of before entering into heaven. Mm -hmm. So even on this once mm -hmm. saved, always saved doctrine, 
purgatory still has a place, brother, because purgatory is not about salvation. Purgatory is about getting rid of those things that might impede our immediate entrance into salvation. Praise God. We're talking to Carlo Broussard, uh, carlobroussard.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. I want to talk to you today about the virtue of fortitude. I remember when I was getting my first degree black belt in the ninja art, my sensei, Bill Poet, did me a great favor by pressing down on my shoulders while I was trying to do push-ups. And when I was groaning and struggling, he would say, you can do one more of anything. And I remember pedaling my bicycle across the United States, across the desert, into a tropical storm, Allison, into the wind, so windy that I had to pedal hard just to go downhill. And I remembered, you can do one more of anything. And I remember when I paddled my surfboard across the Molokai Channel, so hard, the most treacherous, one of the most treacherous channels in the world, over 27 miles, going against the tide, going against the wind, going against the, the, the swell, everything was working against me. But I remembered one thing, that I could do one more of anything. And I'm letting you know, some of you today are really facing challenges in your life. But keep the faith, keep the course. And remember, you can do one more of anything. Just do one more thing. But don't do it on your own strength. I know being involved in new evangelization, it's so challenging, so many things to do. And so often I find myself just whispering this prayer to God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do one more of anything, but that is if you're relying on God's grace and relying on God's power. First thing in the morning, go make your coffee, sit down with the Lord, read the readings from mass, pray the office of readings from the liturgy of the hours, pray a rosary, read the scripture, read a page from the catechism, spend time with the Lord. So many people say, oh, I am so busy, I, I don't have time to even eat. Well, you need to eat your breakfast and you need to receive the bread of life from the Word of God and in your prayer life. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, a Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We gotta let you guys know, Sophia Institute Press has been publishing my books lately. My book, uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and my uh, other book, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, which is such a cool book. You know, uh, I get interviewed uh, about my books a lot, and, and when these people, I gotta just tell you, it's like being proud of your little baby, you know? When they, I was interview, interviewed by Father Ron the other day, a two hour show, and he would kept reading quotes from my book, and I, had, I wrote it a while ago, and I go, wow, that's really good. You know, did I say that? So it's a, it's a, it's a great book, uh, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, kind of leads you on a spiritual journey, the, really the Carmelite uh, spiritual journey, but it does it in a way that talks about my life and about surfing. Uh, so in a way, though, Car we're talking with Carlo Broussard. I love this guy. I just, it's the easiest person in the world to talk with. And, uh, but we're talking about this great subject. His new book is what again, Carlo? What is the exact title? Purgatory is for real. Good news about the afterlife for those who aren't perfect yet. Okay, now I'm going to throw something out there because I get it. I get why that teaching came came about back in the kind in the day around 1500, because 
dude, there was all this confusion about indulgences and all. And sure. do you want to address that? Because I, I hear, I hear, uh, I hear very complicated, uh, you know, um, descriptions of what that is. And I yeah. and I, I can I kind of can dig on why that came about because there was such a, a uh, abuse of that. Sure. What is yeah. what is it? What is the is, what is the Catholic teaching on this concept of indulgences? Yeah. So indulgences is related to purgatory, in as much as indulgences are ways in which we can take care of those remnants of sin in this life, that are the objects of purification in purgatory. So an indulgence is basically some sort of act of charity, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, the church will specify what those kinds of acts of charity are, that the church is saying, hey, if you do this, then this will go toward getting rid of either some or all of those remnants of sin that are normally taken care of in purgatory, if you still have some when you die. And it's an indulgence because the church is exercising her authority to say, hey, these are ways to make you holy because the church has governance over us directly to give us opportunities to become the saints that we're called to be but then, and to possibly become perfectly holy but enough it's a, to enter into heaven. But it's an empty thing to do if you haven't given your life to Jesus. Oh, absolutely. And that's so we, right. So I mean, I, but but uh, the only, no. and see, that's the thing. The only way that these indulgences are going to take care of remnants of sin. It's not magic, right? The condition exactly. for these things to take care of the remnants of sin is that you have charity in the soul, that you love the Lord and that you're in relationship. That's the assumption that's being made before the church even provides the opportunities to help us get rid of the remnants of sin. Yeah, you know, during the year of Jubilee, I was sitting down at the beach with this guy who's a really cool guy, but uh, and he was, uh, he owns a car dealership up in Canada, you know, fairly well to do. And he's saying, dude, I've, I heard about this, this uh, year of Jubilee. If we just go through these doors and we do these things, I get, I don't know what the indulgences were re related to all that. Honestly, I, I, I not holy enough to take advantage of all those things, but, but he was like, it's a ticket to heaven. But I, I but to have a conversation with him about his relationship with Jesus, it was non-existent. Yeah. So, so get. Do you, you know, pinpoint that one more time. Right. So this would be an example of the church being very generous that, hey, if you take this pilgrimage site, you walk through these holy doors, the church in her motherly, tenderly care and mercy is going to open up the floodgates of heaven to help you take care of any remnants of sin that you may have. But that presupposes, that assumes that the person is already in sanctifying grace with charity in a loving relationship with the Lord. It's not magic, right? So it presupposes this relationship with the Lord. So now, now, and you know, you're the right guy to ask these questions. You guys at, at Catholic Answers, you guys just, you really deal with the, with precision, some really difficult questions. So then this question is, um, I'm a I, I'm a member of a guitar church. I love Jesus. We celebrate all the time. I'm raising my kids in the Lord. I meditate on scriptures every day. I give my life to the Lord. I tithe. Um, what happens when someone who has not been, uh, you know, confirmed in the Catholic Church and that sort of thing? Uh, clarify that for us too. You know what I'm trying so to say. Is, is the question, can they be saved, or is the question, will they go to purgatory? <laughs> well, well, I think that's the, I think that's I think both the and? path to surrogate. Yeah, exactly. I love that Catholic way of saying both in. But the question yeah. is, yeah, the question is, they, they, they've given their life to Jesus. What's right. their path? What's their path? Yeah, Are, so I, if they <clears> die <throat> in that state and let's assuming that they are not responsible for their ignorance concerning the truth of the Catholic Church established by Jesus Christ, assuming that they have not made a positive act of the will to say no to the Catholic Church, knowing that it is the true church. Okay, so we call this. That's a good point ignorance. because people, this yeah. is a really important point because <clears throat> I know a lot of people who um, they like a lot of the teachings of the church, but they just don't like institutional religion at all. <clears throat> sure. Excuse me, and they see this, um, and they see the corruption in the church. Yeah, and so th so for good reason. I wouldn't say it's a matter of angst. It's really a matter of conscience that they're saying, 
dude, I can't be part of the Catholic Church. I see this and this and this. So that's right. not what to, what to, where does that person's thought process lie? Yeah. So the, the idea here is they are they've made an intellectual judgment that they ought not to be Catholic. Right. Correct. Now, we would say they're wrong in that judgment. But as to the reasons why they are wrong in that judgment, only God knows that and will right. take that into consideration. If they're not really responsible for their wrong judgment that they ought not to be in the Catholic Church, well, God's not going to hold them accountable for that, right? So if that is the case and the person dies in friendship with Jesus, having charity in the soul because God can give sanctifying grace even for people outside of the Catholic Church, if that person dies with the perfect holiness necessary for heaven, they'll go immediately into and heaven. And I know so many people like that, Carlos, so many beautiful yeah, Christians who have had, had rough experiences, honestly, or, or just, their, just their view. And, but they're all, also the people that say, well, you're not the boss of me. So that's a whole different thing. So there's a rejection of the church of the, of the, that Jesus founded, the Catholic Church, there's a rejection there, but it's it's an attitude of rebellion. It's not an attitude right. of, of conscience. It's two different things. Correct, yeah. And if that person does have some defilement on the soul, remnants of sin, well, then the soul of that person would go through the final purification of purgatory before entering into the beatific vision. Well, it's going to be surprising, I think, for people who— uh, because I, I pretty much plan on being there, um, that uh, it, it's, it's going to be a surprise for people to go, oh, this is awesome, but— what <laughs> you know because they're gonna but but you know the same thing is going to be true that when we get to when we get there we're going to be surprised by a lot of people that we didn't think we're going to go to heaven i remember when we were on that day at the beach and i was talking with these wonderful christians of the christian surfers alliance this is what they told me as they're sending their troops out to witness you know there's a lot of catholics that are christians in fact i heard that pope john john paul gave his life to jesus on his deathbed well, yes, that is true, but he gave his life to Jesus every single day before that. <laughs> Perfectly well said. So, so um, we got to take a break here in a, in a few moments. So, uh, in the in the next minute or so, uh, where can they find your book, and and uh, how can they get to know more about Carla Broussard? Yeah, so so they can go to shop.catholic.com and they can purchase the book from our online store, uh, Catholic Answers Press, and then they can follow my work at catholic.com. But my work gets lost in the feed, so they can go to carlobrusart.com. Most of my work is there as well. That's more better. You know, dude, what do you think about the fact that you're with catholicanswers.com? How does that make you feel? When you wake up every morning, you just go, dude. I have to pinch myself. <laughs> All I can say, Bear, is thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's a pure grace, pure gift. Yeah. Yeah, I know we got to visit there just one time, and it was just so, so cool to be there. And I, and I, love, I love your ministry. Because it's, you know, one of the things I love about your ministry is that you often, um, people will call in and ask questions. And right. you know how a, a lot of Protestants like the proof text. They'll take a scripture from here and here and here and there. And then you'll just say, well, let's go to the Bible and look at that. Right. You know, not yeah. that you don't go to reason and philosophy too. But you're, you're so, uh, you so understand. And, you know, the thing is, is the Catholic Church, and I, I, when, I would be, when I first gave my life to the Lord, I didn't know anything about anything. I was raised in the Catholic Church, but I really wasn't catechized. I thought the Bible just dropped out of the sky one day. And I thought it was the Bible, and then there's now. And uh, I didn't realize it was the Catholic Church that had can canonized those scriptures. So who better to go to to receive the, the, the historical understanding of those verses than the church that canonized those originally? We're talking with Carlo Broussard and, and website. Well, well, CarloBroussard.com. We'll, yeah. we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to Notre Dame fcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, 
all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have Carla Broussard with us today talking about a place he gets to go to called Purgatory. I'll see you when, I get, I'll see you, when you get to heaven, Carla. But uh, no, we, I want to remind you guys, my sons work so hard. Um, you know, we, we filmed uh, our TV show, Long Ride Home. We have now uh, have three seasons uh, up on EWTN, and, uh, and we're working on our fourth season right now. And four, five, and six were all filmed in Hawaii. And, uh, and uh, you can watch them, by the way. You can go to Prime Video and you can watch them, uh, the Long Ride, Home, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. You can become a member of the, the uh, Mama Bears or, the, or Bear School of Manliness at DeepAdventure.com. And then you get access to all of the videos. We give you the secret link to the YouTube so you can kind of sneakily have your brother-in-law watch Long Ride Home whether at their house. Uh, or you can um, uh, go to our go to our, our our website and become a, a part of a, a deeper part of bear school of manliness but i just want to let you guys know my sons work so hard uh to to go out and film this show we do a half a terabyte of, of data every day we film long ride home the men that work on this with us the bikers the none of them get paid they're just they just are so dedicated and i will tell you filming long ride home is by far the hardest thing i've ever done just the filming of it because we're out there uh doing spiritual warfare and uh, and yet we're getting to see God work, but we, because we have really no budget, uh, we work really hard in long days. So I wanted to ask you, please go to our our website deepadventure.com, and you can uh, maybe help us out by uh, with a financial gift. You can go to the the store there, and there's a place where you can give a gift, or you can become a member of Mama Bears or uh, the School of Manliness. But I just love my sons Shane and Joshua so much; they work so hard. And you know, we've won tally awards for our TV show, so it's a really it's a it's a legit really cool show we have carla broussard with us here today we're talking about purgatory what what else do people need to know about purgatory carlo well that it's in the bible that's one thing okay that's give us that give me. us all that stuff i want to hear that stuff <laughs> uh so granted we do not have to appeal to the bible to justify our belief because we're we don't operate on the doctrine of sola scriptura but when the evidence is there it's important to point it out so, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, Paul's talking about how if anyone is talking about those who build upon the foundation of Jesus and you build with certain materials, so gold, precious stone, silver or wood, hay, straw, and how each individual will be will be will stand before Christ on the day, how on the day for Paul, that's the day of judgment and how the individual's works will be tested. If it's wood, hay, and straw, the works will be burned up. And then Paul says that individual will suffer loss on account of those not so good works represented by wood, hay, and straw. And that's not mortal sin, because Paul tells us the individual has built on the foundation of Jesus. That's a Christian. And then Paul goes on to say, even though he suffers loss, he shall be saved, but only as through fire. So there again, the individual saved. So we know this is a saved Christian. Can you go now, back to the beginning? Go. Can you read that whole verse again to us? Can you quote yeah, it again? Yeah, well, I, I, can, I, can, I can pull it up for you here real quick and read it to you explicitly rather than just paraphrasing here. And so we have, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation of Jesus with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become manifest. For the day, the day of judgment, which according to Hebrews 9, 27, comes after death, the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire mm. and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work which any man has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. That's the gold, silver, precious stones. If any man's work is burned up, wood, hay, straw, he will suffer loss, loss, suffering on account of those not so good works, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Now check this out, Bear. This is the day, the day of judgment comes after death. It cannot be heaven because the individual suffers loss and there's like not so good works represented by the wood, hay, and straw. That can't be heaven, nor can it be hell because Paul says that the individual has built on the foundation of Jesus 
and is saved. And the fire is an image that represents purification. So we have a post-mortem, after-death state of existence where a saved individual is being purified, represented by the fire, that's neither heaven nor hell. What do we call it? We call it purgatory. But in the very essence of the word is purgation. Yep, you know, you know, right. uh, you know. I- illustration from surfing. Um, as we give our life to the Lord, there's 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 different. There's this kind of these these this journey that we go on. These different these different stages of our journey with the Lord. Uh, one of them is called the purg- the purgative stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is after you've given your life to the Lord and you've and you've experienced. Uh, You've experienced, you know, experienced him. One of the first things you do, and listen to me out there, the, the, you, uh, the, the young man I'm thinking of, um, God's talking to you about purgation right here on earth. You know, uh, there are things that you need to leave behind. There are things that you need to let go of. There are people you shouldn't be with that shouldn't be on your championship diet. There are places you shouldn't go physically or on the Internet. And this is this phase of purgation on earth. You know what, Carlo, it's like surfing Waimea Bay, dude. The word Waimea means red water, like the, what flowed from Christ's side. To paddle, that only breaks there when it's 24 feet or bigger. When all the other North Shore... Uh, lineups are closed out because it's too big to, to paddle through. You paddle out at Waimea. But to paddle out at Waimea, there's the shore break, and you got to paddle with all. You run and you leap on your board, and you just paddle. It may be 20 minutes to break through that current, that, that tide that keeps pushing you back and keeps sweeping you left or right into the rocks or into these, this hollow breaking shore break. And then eventually you get outside. And you just feel so good because your lungs have been you've been paddling so hard. There's there's oxygen. Talk to us about the purgation work of the Holy Spirit here on Earth. Yeah. As well, I talk about I talk about this in my book because when you come to understand what the doctrine of purgatory is, this after death experience of getting rid of the remnants of sin, you you begin to realize. Well, wait a minute. I can start working on this stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so what is purgatory all about? Well, it's going to purge any guilt of venial sin. Well, I can get rid of guilt of venial sin by praying an act of contrition right now, saying, God, please forgive me for the uncharitable thought I had about my employee or something or my spouse or my kids or whatever it may be. Praying constant acts of contrition. Another thing that's taken care of in purgatory, unhealthy attachments to created goods. So I might have this disordered, unhealthy attachment maybe to money. So how might I take care of that right now? Give a little extra on Sunday for tithing Mm -hmm. or not buy those expensive car, boat or house, get something a little less, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm addicted to coffee, right? If I have this unhealthy attachment to Hey, now wait a minute, wait wait a minute. (laughs) You've gone a step too far. I know Thomas Aquinas would have been the sixth reason for knowing there's a God is coffee. Maybe there's a disorder to the sweetness <laughs> of the coffee, so you hold back on the sugar, right? <laughs> there you go. No, there. I'll so, use Debian so, instead. <laughs> but okay, go on, so I'm now, sorry. And then finally, finally, debt of temporal punishment due for sin. This is basically some displeasure is due for me because I've took, I took pleasure where I shouldn't have in, in committing sin. So I may put myself through some sort of painful activity. It could be abstaining from something I really like, right? Or it could be praying on my knees for a certain amount of time where there's a little pain that's starting to take place, right? And I, and I say, Lord, I want to direct this pain, whatever it may be, whether it's suffering, I might have a headache today, and I voluntarily accept it and offer it up to God, or I might impose some displeasure upon myself and say, Lord, I want to direct this to taking care of any debt of temporal punishment that's due for my past forgiven sin. Any displeasure that's due to me, Lord, because of my past forgiven sin, I'm making up for my sin. Yeah. I want to direct this Sincere displeasure repentance. right here and right now to that. And of course, we have the sacrament of reconciliation, and we have at Mass every Mass, we, we go through that time of, of confessing, our, confessing our sin and our nightly examine, you know, of the good that's things right. in our life. And But I'll tell you what, I'm just going to close real quick with this, Carlo, and that is this. In the last three years, I've been to uh, doctors and hospitals more than 130 times. Prostate cancer, multiple infections, torn bicep, uh, muscle muscle rips because of the prostate cancer, and then just uh, even tooth problem. You know, it's just been like two or two or three years. And I, I said to Cindy, you know, 
I kind of been suffering, haven't I, lately? And of course, she's suffering with me, my wife. And I, I just said, we should stop and just really give this to the Lord. I mean, I have, but I haven't really just in this time now where I'm kind of moving towards away from all that is to just sit and reflect and say, Lord, I'll offer this up because we do part, we do partake, participate in what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Why? Because we're part of his body. We're part of his body. Of course, if we're at part of his body, we're there at the cross too. And so I offer it up for my own purgation and I offer it up as uh, this suffering uh, for all those that I love and in whatever dispensing. Uh, dispensing of grace God wants to actually make that act when you suffer you know I love I love C.S. Lewis's book uh, Problem with Pain it's the next one I'm reading I'm reading six of his books in the next six days awesome. and that's not suffering to read his books by the way Carla Broussard where can people find you they can go to CarlaBroussard.com follow my work there or Catholic.com and if they're interested in bringing me out to speak yes they can go to they can go to CatholicAnswerSpeakers.com just fill out the form and our seminar coordinator will get in touch with them and get the ball rolling. I'd yeah. love to come out, whether it's your parish community or your second grade com- first communion class. You know, to me, I always get I always get to go. I always get called to go speak in the middle of the coldest part of the winter. Come from Hawaii and fly here to the frozen tundra and speak. But Carlo, will, and we but we always say yes, right, Carlo? So go go, go to what is it? What is the website for for the speaker again? CatholicAnswersSpeakers.com. Dude, can you imagine? You, anyone there is going to be awesome to have, but have Carlo Broussard. I love, love having you on the show again, Carlo. Till ne- till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha.